the wife of Hitler's propaganda minister, read the quatrains and, elated at their predictions of victory, showed them to her husband. Goebbels agreed with his wife. Nostradamus's predictions could serve as a propaganda weapon. With clever selection and manipulation, they could be used to help break the French resistance. He ordered Nazi planes to bombard France with leaflets bearing Nostradamus's predictions of Nazi victories. France did fall. The Nazis marched into Paris on June 14, 1940. The French nation, they will believe in rash things. They will be in great grief. The uh, Allies were quick to respond to Hitler's exploitation of Nostradamus's prophecies. Winston Churchill, with the aid of an astrologer, published those quatrains that he felt forecast Hitler's defeat. The Roman power will be defeated, then the great neighbor also, then they will turn about in confusion, the great country perverted will be vanquished. And the Americans also used Nostradamus's predictions in a home front propaganda effort. MGM Studios, under producer Carrie Wilson, produced a series of shorts about Nostradamus for the movie theaters. Beyond exploring the mysteries of prophecies, the films served the national interest. But Nostradamus made some predictions about us, too. The chosen protector of the great country for endless years will hold the famed torch. It will serve to guide this great people, and in its name, they will struggle and triumph. Yes, the people of the 13 colonies chose freedom as the protector of this land. For endless years, freedom has and will hold up the famed torch. In freedom's name, we have struggled, we shall continue to struggle, and shall finally triumph, not without the sacrifice and not without the pain that must forever make mankind free. Nostradamus wrote those words almost 400 years ago. Nostradamus scholars say the war ended as the French prophet had predicted, with the defeat of Germany and with the invention of a new weapon. Saturn of gold will be changed into iron. The contrary of the positive ray shall exterminate all. The contrary of the positive ray. This is thought to be a reference to the chain reaction involved in nuclear fission. Fire, the color of gold from heaven to earth shall be seen. Great murder of mankind great loss of infants. Well, all of this has been about the past. A conjecture of how Nostradamus viewed history from his time to ours. What about today, the present, the here and now? Well, if you keep one eye on your daily newspaper and one eye on the quatrains, I think you can pretty quickly see why so many of his partisans continue to insist on his relevancy in modern times. <laughs> Even more remarkable is how Nostradamus may have foreseen the events in Iran, the ancient name of which was Persia. Rain, famine, war in Persia having not ceased, too great a faith shall betray the monarch. Being ended there, it shall commence in France, a secret omen to one that he shall die. Nostradamus scholars insist that this is a startling prediction about the fate of the Shah of Iran. Too great a faith shall betray the monarch, a secret omen that he shall die. And what of the next line? Being 
end it there. It shall commence in France. Until last year, the majority of people did not know who the Ayatollah Khomeini was, let alone that he would launch his coup against the Shah from Paris. Yet Nostradamus wrote this quatrain over 400 years ago. All too much? Well, let's pause for a moment. That's the past and the present. What about the future? This brings us now to the very essence of the mystery. How accurate is he? Can we dismiss old Nostradamus and all we've just seen as coincidence or facile interpretation? Or is there just possibly some real substance and credibility to what he's written? If we accept past evidence as proof of his accuracy, then there's a fair chance that what he said about our future might also be true. And if so, then we must listen very carefully. Do we really want to know about the future? Maybe so. If we can change it, if by heeding the warnings, we can alter our destiny for the better. But, can we change the future? Of course, it's possible to change the events of the future. Since the future is nothing but the summation of our decisions made now that, that uh, project the future, when we don't like what we're seeing, if we're aware of what those events are going to lead to, we simply change our minds about what we want. The future is determined by our decisions. And if through great awareness, we do not like the trend that is taking place, we change our mind and thus change the course of history. Nostradamus also believed that the future can be changed. In an epistle to his infant son, Cesar, in which he dedicated his life's work to him, he wrote that the tragedies he predicted could be averted. William Shakespeare, born two years before Nostradamus died, also wrote that man, if he chose to, could be the master of his fate. With the idea, then, that we do still have it in our power to affect the future, let's go ahead and look for the signs as Nostradamus wrote about those signs. Let us now encounter the events still to come. But before continuing, let me warn you now that the predictions of the future are not at all comforting. I might also add that these predictions of the past, these warnings of the future, are not the opinions of the producers of this film. They're certainly not my opinions. Their interpretations of the quatrains as made by scores of independent scholars of Nostradamus' work during the last several hundred years. These scholars tell us that Nostradamus foresees a great worldwide drought and famine within the next decade. In the year that Saturn and Mars are equally fiery, the air is very dry, a long meteor. Of people and beasts shall be a horrible destruction. Blood, thirst, famine, when the comet shall run. When the comet shall run. When the comet shall run. Halley's Comet, that most spectacular of comets, shall run again in 1986. Distress from fire in the sky. There is a very great drought. Fish in the sea, river and lake, boiled hectic. The great famine do I see drawing near turning from one way to another and becoming universal. A famine so great and so long that man shall become a man-eater. Nostradamus also predicts great natural disasters like earthquakes. His proponents say that he actually gives the month and year of a cataclysmic quake. He predicts it will begin after a series of volcanic eruptions not unlike those currently exploding in the American Northwest. Fire from the 
center of the Earth, the great earthquake shall be in the month of May. Saturn, Capricorn, Jupiter, Mercury in Taurus, Venus in Cancer, Mars in Zero. So, Nostradamus has given us the month, May, of a great earthquake. And more, he has given us the year. Now, astrologists tell us the conjunction of Saturn, Capricorn, Jupiter, and Mercury will occur again in 1988. May 1988. But where? Does Nostradamus say this great earthquake will strike? Fire from the center of the earth shall make an earthquake in the new city. According to many scholars, whenever Nostradamus wrote about new cities, he was referring to cities in the new world of America. Here he could have been referring to the new cities of San Francisco and Los Angeles, both of which sit on an earthquake fault line. The San Andreas Fault uh, comes up from the Mexican border and goes up past San Francisco, very close to San Francisco, and on up to the north. The crust of the Earth is broken up into plates, which are moving with respect to each other. Normally, it doesn't occur smoothly. It occur it's, uh, strain builds up like the energy you store in a rubber band when you stretch it, uh, until it, the rubber band breaks. Uh, and the plates, or the, the rocks along the edge, snap back uh, into line, and uh, the vibrations that are caused by that sudden motion uh, radiate out and are felt and recorded as an earthquake. There was one of about magnitude eight in 1906 that destroyed San Francisco. It's been determined that the recurrence rate between great earthquakes is about 160 years. The last one was in 1857, that was 122 years ago. So uh, we're getting up into the time period when we have to think about such an occurrence. Fire from the center of the earth shall make an earthquake in the new city. Nostradamus foresees that these disasters will be worldwide. I bewail Nice, Monaco, Pisa, Genoa, Savona, Siena, Capri, Modena, Malua. Fire and earthquake. There will be great floods, unhappy endings. The deluge will be so great and sudden, there will be no spot of earth for a firm foothold. Nostradamus, like the Bible, predicted that these natural disasters will precede a great war, a war far worse than all the other wars put together. Nostradamus not only predicts Third World War, but he even predicts when and where it will begin and who will be fighting. He tells us, too, how long the war will last and who will survive. Well, first we ask, when? In one quatrain, he tells us 
that the war will begin when the Sun, Mars, and Mercury conjunct in the sign of Aquarius. And this conjunction is an infrequent one. It happens again in 1994. So this could be the year in which the Third World War begins. In another quatrain, he gives us an actual date when the war will be well underway. In the year 1999 and seven months, from the sky will come the great king of terror. He will bring back to life the king of the Mongols. Before and after war reigns. Out of the country of greater Arabia shall be born a strong master of Mohammedan law. This king will enter Europe wearing a blue turban. He is one that shall cause the infernal gods of Hannibal to live again. He will be the terror of mankind, never more horror. This king, this warlord, Nostradamus says, will wage war against the West. The kingdom of the Fez shall come to the throne of Europe. When? Well, starting between 1994 and 1999. Where? From the Middle East, an invasion of Europe spreading across the entire world, a war led by a great king of terror, a third antichrist after Napoleon, after Hitler, a leader so terrible, he will bring the world, according to Nostradamus, face to face with final annihilation. The great one of the East, by land, sea, and air, with a great army, will cross with death. The kingdom of the church will be overcome by the sea. From Persia, very nearly a million. From Persia, from greater Arabia, from the kingdom of Mohammed. Nostradamus clearly suggests that the Middle East will play a central role in the trouble to come. There are few contemporary foreign policy experts who could quarrel with him. World attention is now focused on that part of the world with its oil deposits and its growing population of devout Muslims. There are over 750 million Muslims in the world, most of them in the Middle East. Recently, they have been rediscovering their Islamic roots. Long suppressed by the superpowers, they are now beginning to reassert themselves politically. They can do this because they have the oil that the West needs. They can become, experts agree, a threat to world peace. But are they capable of waging a nuclear war against the West within the next 20 years? Nostradamus would seem to say yes, through an alliance with Russia. The Moorish law will be seen to fall, followed by another that is more pleasing. Forestanes will be the first to give way. Nostradamus experts agree that here the French seer is suggesting that Islam will spread through Russia, starting in the south, near the river Borysthenes. They foresee Soviet nuclear capacity combining with Islamic manpower to wage war by 1999. The sky will burn at 45 degrees. Fire approaches the great new city. Nostradamus names the first nuclear target. A great new city near 45 degrees latitude. Experts agree that that could only mean New York.
also said to have written of the American response. The trumpet shakes with great discord. An agreement broken. Lifting the face to heaven, the bloody mouth will swim in the blood. Overcome, the great nation is uncertain. Shortly before the sun, a battle is engaged. on a greater scale than ever before. Explosions. There will be a great onslaught. There will be terror, terror, terror. suggests that New York, with its skyscrapers, its man-made mountains, will be a nuclear target. Nothing, the prophet says, will keep the city from dying. burns with heat, a hot wind, war. The great city will soon be quite deserted. Not a single one of the inhabitants will remain. Nostradamus tells us how long the war will last. The war shall last seven and twenty years. The earth trembles, pushed into the air and falls again. The herald is sent out to call for surrender.
there shall be more grievous wars and battles. Towns, cities, castles, and other buildings shall be burnt, desolated, and destroyed. Married women and widows ravished, sucking children dashed against the walls of towers. So many evils shall be committed that almost the entire world shall be undone and desolate. Antichrist. Three times will he be annihilated. Seven and twenty years will blood be shed in war. Century eight, quatrain 77. Nostradamus tells us that the war will end seven and twenty years after it begins with the death and the defeat of the Antichrist, and it shall end due to an unexpected alliance. When those of the Arctic Pole shall be united together, there shall be in the East great fear and trembling. Those of the Arctic Pole could mean the Soviet Union, the United States. As we see here, at the Bering Straits, the two countries are at their closest point in the Arctic Circle. One day, Nostradamus wrote, the two great masters will be friends. Their great powers will be increased. The Eastern ruler will be vanquished. The sun and the eagle will appear to be victorious. Peace prosecuted by death. It shall be achieved. In one night, the tree that has been long dead and withered shall grow green again. There shall be a renewed reign of Saturn and a golden age. Here shall begin an age of universal peace, a peace of a thousand years. And after a peace for a thousand years, Nostradamus tells us next to nothing. He does, however, tell us in what year the world will finally come to an end. The year, 3,797. He wrote about the end of the world in a letter to his infant son. And you know, it's at such times that each of us looks at the long road ahead, contemplating not only our own future, but the future of our children. Not many of us can see the future, but none of us need be Nostradamus or have his gifts for seeing through time the sense that we are at a crossroads, that our immediate future could hold the worst war man will ever know. So we must, each of us in our own way, do something to make sure that that war will never happen. Perhaps if we heed Nostradamus, if we face up to the challenges of the future, it need not be too late. Not for us, not for our children our children's children.